We're not messing about today. We're going on board a proper car. Welcome back guys, my name's Lee, welcome to Car UK, and you join me today as I'm on the way to the garage to go and have a look at my latest purchase. Now, this is a good one, a 1997 Rover Metro 100 that I have bought for a thousand pound. Yep, a thousand quid for a Rover Metro. I've not, have I gone mad? Well, I hope not. So, what's the story behind this car? Well, I was on Facebook one evening, looking on the marketplace as I do it, just to see if there's any cheap cars on there that I could purchase, and I came across this little Rover 100 Metro. And as soon as I saw it, I just had to have it. It's a 1997 Rover 100 Metro. It's the three-door model. It's a 1.1 petrol. Yeah, I'd have preferred it was a 1.4, but the 1.1, still a little nippy engine in it. It's blue, which is my favorite color. And best of all, it's only done 11,000 miles. Yep. 11,000 miles. It's been off the road for about six or seven years. So as soon as I saw the car, I had to I jumped straight onto the messenger, got hold of the guy and said, yep, yeah, I'll have it, no bartering. If it's as you described it, I'll have it for a thousand quid. I went straight up there, bought the car, and then shipped it back to the workshop. Now, I've been trying to do this video for a while now, so I have started a few little bits on it, which I'll talk about when I go around the car, but it's still gonna need a lot of doing to it. So let's get down to the workshop go for a drive in this car, which I'm looking forward to, have a look around it, explain what we've done, why we bought the car, and what we're gonna do with it. And here she is, guys, the 1997 Rover 100 Metro Knightsbridge Edition. Isn't she beautiful? 1.1 petrol, roughly about 60 horsepower they were, 1.1 K-series engine they use in these. Uh, they ran from about 1994 to 1997, replacing the uh, Rover Metro design. Now. Before I get into the book of comments, I do know this is technically called the Rover 100, not the Metro, uh, but it is basically based on the Metro. It was replaced in 94, like I said. Um, they changed the name basically to coincide with the other models they were producing at the time, Rover, which was the 100, the 200, the 400, the 600, and the 800. So the uh, bit of a slightly different grille on it and headlights, and they changed the interior, made it a bit more regal inside. Uh, give it the old Rover Hyacinth BK look for those of you who uh, watched 90s sitcom. But uh, she's an absolute peach. Let's have a look around her. So, in the nice blue tyre, nice Dunlop on the front there, a little bit of wear on it, about four or five mil tread. Like I said, over the paintwork, if you go around it, it'll come a bit obvious, it's a bit shabby in places, the paint, if I'm honest, that's what does let it down a little bit, but we're going to address that in a bit, well, I have got a plan for that. I've also got a plan to deal with these horrible grey bumpers, now, I know they were standard with the grey bumpers in, on the Knightsbridge model, but they did do colour-coded ver colour versions of the bumper, uh, and to be honest with you, I'm probably going to get them looked at and sorted, but we'll, as we go around, it'll, it'll come more apparent about what we need to do to this car. Uh, like I said, very straight on the sides, it's nice, it's a nice looking thing, it's not been dented or damaged or anything like that. It's just been touched up in a few places and it just needs a bit of rectifying. Arches, how many of these have I repaired over the years? Rotten. These used to rot like hell on these. This one's just, just a little tiny bit there gone. But other than that, original and solid, it's actually decent. Underneath this car, it's absolutely unbelievably great. It's absolutely amazing. It's so clean and tidy. I've done a video of it to show you. It is really, really tidy condition. Um, and, it, and it's just, and you can just tell it's just only done 11,000 miles. Around the back, um, tailgate looks straight, but in reality, when you get close to it, we've got problems. I said the bumper's peeling, it's been painted before, it's made up, it's horrible. So obviously that needs addressing. Uh, the rubbers, someone's had the, painted this tailgate and touched it up, made a really bad job of it, and then just left the rubber in, and not even pushed the window out, which is ridiculous, because they just pop out, they're just on it, they're not bonded or anything, so they just pop out, and you can paint them, put them back in, but for whatever reason, they haven't done that. And they've just painted that tailgate, and although it looks probably better than it did, it still just looks really poor when you get quite close to it. So again, it's just little bits of paint issues all around the car that's letting this down with this superb mileage on it. Um, moving on to... Oh! Also as well, notice the badges are missing. Obviously they've taken the badges off. They're in the door pocket actually, uh, when they've painted them and not put them back on. So they're going to need putting back on to make it get it all standard again. Uh, moving on around the corner. Again, the arch. Pretty solid, the arch again. You can tell it's had a little bit of paint on it, but I mean, it's the actual arch itself is is in decent condition it just wants uh, flicking in again uh it's been painted again here it's just all been touched up everywhere and it's just it's just starting to ruin the car so it's from a so from a distance it's, from distance it looks really nice when you get close up it is starting to show its age this car i mean it is 25 years old but 
overall we've got no rock we're straight we've got a real good base solid base here to do some work to this car and it does need work because you look at the paint it's just little bits round it looking around here where the wipers are it's been painted again it's just all mismatched and of course the worst bit i even already noticed is the roof the roof is just faded all away it's never been painted this or touched up it's just original paint on it and it's just all burnt away from the sun damage over the years and it's just letting the car down so it's quite obvious that we're going to need to paint this car which i am going to be willing to do because i think it is worth doing with the mileage on it and i think we can increase its value from there but we'll talk about more about that in a minute so let's have a quick look inside so no central locking on this they did come with central locking but not on this model this is the base model so we've got a couple of keys of it. i've got one here original uh, dealer fob on it from bishop and bishop of leicester who would probably been the dealer supplying the vehicle uh, little fob on it that doesn't work the central locking although it did do on some models it just works the alarm on this uh, so it is the old fashioned sort of key in the door job so you've got all the little scratches around here you can see where people come into the car one night at night time and they've scratched it all interior very rover-esque interior of the, of the mid 90s a bit of grey a little of a bit of grey little rip in the seat there for good luckily it's on the seam so it hasn't torn the material it's just it's just broke the stitching so we can we can redo that that's a really easy job just to re-seam that back in and that'll get the interior nice because the rest of the interior is really clean it's the bolsters are good the seats are good as you would expect for 11,000 mile car mats in there look original um not i can't guarantee they are but they do look original size upright let's have a look inside oh. it's just like going back in time isn't it here we go with that there we go 11,000 miles on the clock let's start her up press the button get the alarm off there we go we've got no warning lights to worry about no abs light to worry about or engine managing light didn't have any of that on this car they were bog basic this one uh, has even got an airbag although some did have airbags fitted no power steering on these as well uh, none of the metros or rover unders ever had power steering they never need they didn't really need them to be honest um wind me down windows we did do electric windows on some of the models but not on this one we do have a sunroof though um i've taken the cover off this because it was leaking so we got that first thing they did was sorted that out it was just dirty what a bit of moss had a bit of moss in the seam so just wanted cleaning out sorted the tangs out reset it all up and now uh, that's all back together so i just need to put that cover back in that's on the back seat uh, and speaking of the back seat three seats there not that you want to sit three people on this car but trust me um it uh, it wasn't really just have a free of people to be honest it's a bit crammed in but like i said we've got some new rubbers there for it which i'll talk about in a bit but that's for the windows um because we're going to need to they're going to need replacing because they're all horrible in paris and that's the sunroof one that i'm going to put back on in a minute but uh yeah there it is no not even any headrests in the back so this is how basic this car was bear in mind this car was sort of started from the design in the 1970s so you're uh, it's uh, it went on for a long long time 17 years this car was in production for one form or the other but like i said the engine sounds lovely let's have a look at it there it is the 1.1 rover k series eight valve engine um beautiful lovely little engine they revy they were, they were they had loads of power in them now they did have issues with cylinder egg gasket problems um it was well known the rover cases engines but i mean towards the end they did sort of rectify it a bit but a lot of damage had done done, done by then the reputation sort of went downhill but honestly i've mean, said worked on loads of these and when you get a good one like this one they're just they're just so revy and pull so well and they give you so much performance they're a lovely lovely engine at the time when they come out in the late 80s they were way ahead of anything else on the market but um yeah, new battery on it as well. We've put a new battery on it because the old one was uh, flat as a kipper. Um, but like I say, it's just, just look at the room you've got. I mean, this is a small car. It's by not just by modern standards, but by standards of the day. But yeah, it's still got loads of room around it. Look at the servo, servo and the master cylinder on the bulkhead there. And the motor, the heater motor just bolted on as well. It's just simplistic motoring. Um, worth pointing out, this is the multi-point injection version. They did do a single-point injection version. This is the multi-point one. So it's a little bit more crisp, a bit more sharper, a little bit better on fuel um, as well. So yeah. Yeah, nice little thing like i said also noticed put some new spark plugs and leads on it we've done a little bit of work to this already new distributor new rotor arm and a couple of uh, new switches as well the uh, ecu temp switch was going faulty on it so it was uh, causing the fans to come on all the time so we changed that uh, on it as well so 
so it's to, just to get it all running 100% right and efficient and a new a new source down pipe flexi pipe we put on it as well because it was uh, had a bit of a blow on it so like I said we have done some work to it so right let's rig it up and go for a test drive I'm looking forward to this one right we've had this car around the workshop now for a few weeks I've been going home in it a couple of nights and when I go home in it it just puts a massive smile on your face when you've had a crap day fires into life that little 1.1 engine responsive on the button that's how we want it so let's get her on the road you shoot off in it and in reality you're not going that fast but it feels because you're low to the ground and it's small and boxy like a mini almost you just you feel as though you're going faster than you are the engine pulls really well in this it's just superb you throw it into the bends like now and it just drives it just takes it all up it's lovely it's a lovely thing to drive with a little short shift gears as well as you sort of knock it through the gears the gearboxes were so well balanced in these rover k-series engines it's literally like driving a little go-kart with the sort of before the overall performance of it you just don't get that in cars of today they're just all a bit lackluster but obviously you're not getting the creature comforts that we get in modern cars i haven't got no cd player or usb i even got anti-lock brakes no traction control nothing like that this car is a void of all those things in fact it hasn't even got power steering but to be honest with you when you when you're driving it doesn't make any odds any difference you won't notice it only when you're parking really that you have to sort of lug it around a little bit but that's the fun of owning an old car you know back in the day we didn't have power steering in those luxuries we just got on with it and drove them but like i said just flying around now on these on the back streets it just it's just an absolute pleasure to drive it puts a smile on your face you drive down the road and people look and stare at you and put your thumbs up and just reminisce about oh, about when they owned a metro well when they learned to drive in one or the mum had one or the parents or grandparents had one everyone knew someone who had one or had a metro and they were just a car you saw everywhere on the british roads and people loved them in fairness although the design was quite outdated even especially towards the end of this run in the rover 100 series in the mid 90s it was still it still had a little bit it still had a little bit of sophistication about it the suspension system on this is hydrogas so basically it's like a fluid based suspension and it was designed in the 1970s and it was adapted in the 1980s and when they changed this car from the austin metro to the rover metro they made a massive design change new engines and stuff like that but also the suspension was updated it became sort of a interlinked uh, it came sort of an interlinked set, a fully independent suspension system when they brought it together with this interlinked suspension system it radically changed the handling of the car it made it even more nimble and more soft and more forgiving in the bumps and to be honest with you compare that to most modern cars of today i mean i drove a, a say i for this morning for mot a four-year-old car and it was horrible it was banging it was really harsh and horrible there was nothing wrong with the car but that's just what they've come to accustomed to they're running on coil spring they're running on front coil springs and a, a light a, and a beam axle on the back i think in a way we've gone backwards in technology this suspension system is really sophisticated for its day and age but what we're going to do about this rover 100 metro well let me pull over and talk to you about what my idea is for this car right so why have i bought this rover 100 well a couple of things i've been after one of these for a number of years now now back in the day when i started out in the car game at 17 years of age i left my job sold sold my car that i had at the time which was an old peugeot 306 turbo diesel d turbo sold the car went to the auctions and started sort of buying and selling that was my sort of my moment if you like with my little bit of wages i'd left over and that car money i started buying and selling cars and selling them on from a sort of a young age and at the time the sort of thing i was buying was lots of old fiestas escorts and lots of these lots of rover hundreds and metros as well because they were 10 a penny they were everywhere and they were cheap money when i would buy these for like some between 50 to 200 pounds from the auction or from private people who were selling them like i said they were just everywhere and they always had the same sort of problems with them usually rotten arches on the back i'd rub down all the arches fill them all up paint them from a, with a color match used to get from a, a motoring shop called alfred used to get like a five pound rattle can that was the, the paint match was quite good and just sort of do the arches up i've sort of been taught by my, my grandfather who was a painter and he sort of rubbed off 
on me and I got quite good at it. Now I wasn't professional by any shape or form but I got the cars in a better condition than what they were, sort of tidied them up in order to get them up for sale and sort of flip them on for a profit. And I wouldn't make much, you might make 150, 200 pound a car. You didn't make loads of money but back then to me it was my it's how I started out. So I used to have these all the time in stock, buying and selling them and I used to own rooks of them as well, all sorts of posh, all sorts of different models, whether it was a diesel model he made, the GTIs, GTAs, I had abundant, I had loads of them and I, and I really enjoyed them. Now over the years as I sort of progressed with the motor trade, I started these cars started to fade away, but I always kept an eye on the prices of them, sort of always seeing how much they were, and maybe looking at buying one again, just to keep us maybe for my own, my own pleasure as a toy maybe. And as those years progressed on, and I saw them getting more and more expensive, I decided that I needed to start buying one, because at one point I was actually running a car auction, oh, about six, seven years ago, I was around for a few years, and we started getting a few metros in, and I noticed that the prices of them were starting to get a little bit higher than what I used to buy them for. In fact, they were getting a lot higher than what I used to buy them for. So I thought, but one of the, these are going to be a future classic. They're going to be like a mini in maybe a 10 years' time. The prices are just going to just go through the roof. So I was trying to buy one for a number of years, but just couldn't find one until this one popped up on Marketplace. And when it did pop up, I just had to buy it. I had to get it because at 11,000 miles, it was a no-brainer. Find the paintwork shabby. There's no doubt about it. It needs addressing, and we are going to address it. And But when we do that, I think we've actually got ourselves a sound investment. You see, this car as it is, I've given a 1,000 quid for it, and I spent about £150 so far on a new a new exhaust system, point a, a distributor cap and some leads and plugs and a few other little minor bits of trim. Nothing really major. But if I was to sell this car now as it is, I think I'd easily get sixteen or seventeen hundred pounds for it. So we could just sell it now and have a little profit out of it. But if we were to paint it, that would be a completely different scenario. In fact, if we paint it, got it all done, which probably would have cost around probably about a thousand pounds to have this painted. Sort of rough idea at the moment. I've, I've been getting some sort of put, getting some prices off people. We'd then have an absolutely immaculate car because underneath this car is absolutely outstanding, and only the paint lets it down. So we fix the seat. Had the car painted, I think then potentially this is probably worth in today's market three, three and a half thousand pounds without any shadow of a doubt. So we'd actually be, build ourselves a better margin for it. So that's what I am going to do. I'm going to get this painted in the spring. I'm not going to get it painted just yet. Probably going to do it after Christmas in the spring. Get it, get the windows popped out of it. Get it all painted, new rubbers in, stitch the seat up, and then we'll have an absolute mint eleven thousand mile car. But are we then going to sell it? No, probably not. I'm going to hold on to this, I think. This is one for me. What's this going to be worth in five years' time? Well, if it's mint, and in mint condition today, it's probably worth three and a half grand. But in five years, it could be five or six thousand pounds. And it's only done 11,000 miles. So if I was to keep it for five years, and in, it had, say, 13,000 miles on it in five years' time, but I looked after it and kept it in good condition, it's probably going to be worth five or six times its probably current value as it stands right now. So that's what I'm going to do with it. You're going to see this car probably on the channel a lot more in the future, because I'm going to be using it especially in the summer and I will keep it post and I will keep you posted on it on when it goes to paint and over and the overall journey of getting this car back to mint condition because I love it and I just can't and I just at the moment I can't part with it but you know maybe but you know I am a motor trader and at the end of the day everything is for sale I suppose when you push to it so maybe one day we might sell this car hopefully but hopefully that's a long way away so Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a little bit different. I've got more videos coming this week. I'm working on. Uh, please bear with me because I am actually moving house as well at the moment, so everything's sort of all in the air. But I will, I will bring you content. I promise you. And I want to hear your ideas and comments as well. If you've had one of these metros or Rover Underers, let me hear your comments and stories. I love reading all that. I love reading all those comments. And also, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out immensely. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.